Hey everybody, welcome back. It's time for another set of reviews, this time on the tier 2, 3, and 4 Japanese destroyers, the Umikaze, the Wakatake, and the Isokaze. I hope you're nice and satiated from eating all those hot dogs and burgers yesterday, and uh, I am on my way back to my home from Boston, so um, just another one of the videos that I uploaded ahead of time to make sure that you guys had plenty of stuff to sink your teeth into aside from the aforementioned burgers and shit but uh starting off with the umikaze here this is a hell of a ship to have at tier two let me just say that straight off the bat so taking a look at the stats here the torpedoes you start off with are five kilometer 44 knot they're i mean they're just terrible and uh they have a 22 second reload um looking at some of the other stuff though you do have a couple main turrets uh when you start off with you actually have some secondary guns too which get removed in favor of adding a third turret with the hull upgrade your rudder shift goes from four seconds down to 2.7 and uh yeah that's pretty much about it so um not a bad upgrade honestly but your torp upgrade is a bit more significant because that boosts your range and your speed and a small little uptick on your damage uh, you go from 5 kilometers to 8 kilometers, and you have the 48 knot torps, which, given the additional range, the speed is pretty much inconsequential. Uh, same with the additional 2 second reload, and it, it, basically your torp spamming. And I don't mean that in the sense of, oh, it's a wall of torps. No, it's just a rather steady stream. I mean, if you can space these out properly, like every 12 seconds... Can you just imagine how annoying that would be to play against? Which I got to try now that I mentioned that because I've never uh, tried to space these out like evenly at 12 seconds for, uh, you know, the same target <laughs> just to get them to keep turning and whatnot. But um, situational awareness, last stand, superintendent. I'll definitely go with AFT and obviously concealment expert to get that below five kilometers on this ship, which is insane. Um, speed boost. Uh, well, the speed flag, eh, it does okay, but um, again, the color scheme on the Japanese destroyers looks like shit. You might as well just smear pickle juice all over the damn thing and call it, call it a day because that's pretty much what it looks like. Yeah, hopefully we get some more options at some point in the near future, but when you do apply one of the camos here for reducing concealment, it goes down to 5.4, so that's uh, pretty healthy. Now, if you haven't played the low-tier Japanese destroyers, um, like, I really wasn't joking about the spamming. I mean, look at that shit. I already got a new set out. It's basically like a long-range Thurski. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, but nowhere near as funny to play simply because of the fact that you don't have this baby Shimikaze wall of torps that's going out at 4 kilometers. Um, but I'll say that the Umikaze has an appeal all of its own because of the fact that, you know, it's low-tier, you get to mess around with uh, leading targets and anticipating and um, sometimes not necessarily doing what the uh, what the target lead indicator is telling you. So one of the other benefits actually about the speed of the reload is when you get a torp hit and you cause flooding or if you cause flooding and then you get another one right after um, say with the next wave I can guarantee you that if you cause flooding you're probably uh, you, you put yourself in a really good position to sink them from the flooding damage. And that's actually, I would say, the biggest strength that this ship has, uh, aside from being able to get stupidly close to targets. And uh, don't ask me why. I, I, get, I still get revealed in this uh, ship way too often. Um, I get way too close to enemy ships. And um, I'm not afraid to use my guns with any of the destroyers, uh, regardless of what... Uh, like if they're Japanese, Russian, or American, um, the guns are, that's how I play. So uh, it gets a little bit more interesting with the Wakataki, the Isokazi, and when I get around to reviewing it, um, probably within the next week, the Minakazi. But uh, for now, let's just savor the fact that I did some decent damage there, and um, I didn't realize I had this much backup. So no wonder why the poor guy was trying to turn away. But... Uh, moving in towards the middle here, uh, we do have a 100 point lead and we're up a ship as well. And this little Tachibana is going to get a little frisky with me here. So um, you really don't want to get into these uh, 
close range uh, knife fights with other destroyers simply because of the fact that it is a bit of a long ship and uh, for a destroyer you know it's not that maneuverable um i feel a lot more confident in the isokazi or the minikazi than i do this and it just doesn't feel as good as those ships do when it comes to maneuvering but um really when it comes down to it your primary goal is to send torps out to try to uh direct the enemy ships to try to of course get them into traps you want them to hit the torps but if you can get them to turn away from an objective or you know turn in a, in a direction of other torps or uh, a, you know exposure to a battleship and you know hopefully they can light them up um and also the other big thing is capping and that is something that should not be lost on anybody when it comes to a destroyer. That's where your XP is, and that's where you're going to be able to get through a lot of these. Uh, if, if you want to consider a grind, I mean, I personally, I don't run anything other than... I, I, my account always has premium time. So I'm very particular about that because I hate not having a full set of XP or uh, credits earned in the match, especially when it's a good one. So, um, of course at this tier, I, I know everybody wants to say that, oh, you know, people don't know how to move. Yeah, you're right, a lot of people don't because either they're new or, you know, whatever the case may be. You, you never really know about anybody that you're playing against, but um, when it comes to low tier, I've been actually challenged a lot more in order to hit people with torps because they're not bow forward. Um, most of the time these guys are moving around a little bit more and uh, like that first clip there where I was uh, sending torps out in uh, South Carolina, I almost said north, um, a South Carolina, he dodged I think four or five waves before I finally started getting hits on him and he only started taking hits because he started engaging other targets and that dictated his movement more than the avoidance of my torpedoes. But it's just kind of interesting, um, you know, you see a lot of the same mistakes at tier 2 as you do at tier 10, or at least I do, and Dursky beached and then ate a tour. And I gotta say, that sound effect now that they added there, really good, um, the additional explosion sound. Um, now I find myself in a bit of a hairy situation here where a Bogatir is coming up close to me and I use the island as best as I can to uh, shield me from his many 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 guns that he has and uh managed to get off my torpedoes get a few right in there and he had just used a repair because uh he had some fires on him so he's just gonna go ahead and bleed out and i'm telling you if if there's one strong suit that this ship has it, like legitimately it's the fact that the torpedoes when you are able to connect on the target if they cause flooding you can have another set of torpedoes out to catch them after they repaired and get more flooding damage. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but flooding is the bane of a battleship or really any other ship, but especially battleships. Now there was a Campbelltown over here and uh, lost track of him, didn't think he would turn back this way. And sure enough, <laughs> surprised him with a couple torps, um, did not expect that at all. But really, it's a solid ship at Tier 2. Um, oh, okay, it, it is the best ship at Tier 2. I don't think there's any real debate about that. I mean, there are some potential candidates. I mean, even though I don't care for the Dresden slash Emden, I understand that it's a very popular ship. And uh, given the rate of fire, it tends to do pretty well in most people's hands. It just didn't do that well in mine. So uh, moving on to the Wakataki, however... So what I like about the Japanese destroyers and their doctrine with the first few of the uh, the lineup here, you know, especially compared to the American destroyers, is that the USDDs, you know, two, three, four, they tend to just be a gradual evolution, like, you know, small baby steps. But when it comes to the difference between a Numakazi and a Wakataki, it's a pretty stark contrast. And then the 
Isokazi ramps that up even further, but um, by that I mean you have higher shell velocity with the main battery of the Wakataki instead of 660 meters per second on the uh, Umakazi and actually the Isokazi. Uh, this has 825 meter per second uh, shell travel. So that's, uh, that's really quick and it should give you a little bit of an indication that you should definitely use these guns. Uh, they do have much better range too instead of 6.7 on the Umakazi, these have 9.4. And that's before AFT or anything like that, so that's pretty good. Um, you have a similar 2x2 two two setup with the torpedoes. They're faster though at 57 knots. They are a little shorter in range at 7 kilometers, but it's very usable as you start off with a 6.1 kilometer detection range. And of course, you can get that down to 5.9 with the camo, as you'll see in a second. Um, but as far as maneuverability is concerned, it's kind of interesting because the Wakataki has a 70 meter tighter turning radius with the same uh, rudder shift once you get it upgraded. So 2.7 second uh, rudder shift time, but instead of 540 meter turning radius, it's 470. And that's a pretty damn good improvement. So um, overall, across the board, this is certainly a better ship over, um, you know, as, as far as the stats are concerned. And in play, I would say that, you know, I vastly prefer the Wakataki over the Umakaze, um, even though it has much stiffer competition at its tier and it gets into tier 5 matches. I still think there's uh, a lot more to like about the Wakataki's general performance and its, I would say its, uh, its ceiling, its performance ceiling is a lot higher than what the Umakaze is capable of. Um, I mean, you have the guns to back things up, um, much better shell velocity at better range. You have faster torps that, you know, they take twice as long to reload, but they they feel better when you're firing these than, in my opinion, than the uh, than the Umakaze's torpedo selection. So, but uh, moving on to the gameplay here, I've got Jason, who's already got three kills in his Dursky. He's backing me up here and um, kind of stumbled upon a few more ships than I anticipated. And there's a South Carolina at the top part of the map, and I'm going to start turning my bow towards him after I sent these uh, torpedoes off to the Kawachi. And now we've got uh, Jason coming in, and he's going to lay down the whole wall of torps. Of course, try to uh, make something happen here and get these guys off this cap so we can uh, try to recap it and uh, secure a victory here. And as you saw, I did about 24,000 damage with just three torpits on the Kawachi, which is a vast improvement over the damage capability that you would see with a new Mikaze. Um I mean, three tour pits on that would be like 15,000 damage, maybe. I mean, I, I think that's actually even being a little generous. Um, Jason got his fourth kill there. I think he, yeah, he took out the Kawachi, but he's about to get taken out himself as well as I charged the South Carolina like I would in a US or Russian destroyer. <laughs> get the devastating strike as well. I, I just like playing like this, especially at this tier, because as you can see with these ships like so damn close to me and um, you know walking in front of my uh, torpedo arcs here, um, low tier is just batshit crazy fun and there's a lot to like about that chaos and kind of envelop yourself in it. Um, it. There's just so many things that can happen and there's a bit more randomness. It, it feels pretty good so you can call it seal clubbing all you want, I think that's a stupid ass term, but as far as twerp dodges are concerned, that was pretty good. But, you know, I just, I really think that there's a lot to enjoy at these low tiers, and a ship like this, and like the Dursky, um, you know, the, the Bogatir, the Svetlana, they make it a lot more fun overall. So, managed to drop my torps on the South Carolina there, I almost said North Carolina, damn, that thing's been on my mind way too much lately. But, um... There's an Umikaze back here who's been harassing us and sending torps every which way. So I finally have my torps overlapping a little bit here to where I have a chance of actually hitting this guy and I really don't want him to get away. Luckily, torp finds its mark and takes him out. Now the guns, I, I use guns regardless of whatever ship I'm using. I'm not afraid of being detected. And when it comes to the Wakataki's guns, they're the same. Uh, type that are on the Minikaze, and the Minikaze has really good guns. The, I, as far as I'm aware, the only real difference is the Minikaze has shorter range, and it has uh, better dispersion by just a, a fraction. But um, the Wakataki, I think, is a fantastic ship at Tier 3, and is certainly a threat to enemy ships in a Tier 5 match, because it's effectively a 
Minikaze with two thirds the torpedoes. I mean, they're not as good in terms of the actual torpedo damage, but uh, you really should not discount that ship at all. Um, try to take care of it as soon as it pops up, because it's just one of those ships that can, you know, kite away and uh, cause a lot of headaches later on in the match. Well, let's take a look at the Isokazi now, which is a hell of a tier 4 ship. And I've got some thoughts on this that'll go over later, but you actually have the same armament as the tier 2 Umakazi which is pretty interesting. So you're back down to the 660 meter uh, shell velocity instead of 825 from the Wakataki, and uh, you have literally the same setup with the guns. So kind of interesting on that, but your range is considerably better. So instead of 6.7 kilometer, you're at 8.3, but with your FCS upgrade, that goes up to 9.1. But because of the fact that you have such a low shell velocity, you're going to miss a lot of shots when you're talking about ranges above like say seven kilometers um, or greater and in that respect uh, the Isokazi kind of refocuses back on being a stealth boat like the Umakazi whereas the Wakataki and the Minikaze are a lot more flexible because of the range of their guns well Minikaze to a lesser degree but uh, with the speed of the uh, the shells that they have and you know there's to me, that's how the Wakataki and Minikaze play. They're very similar, whereas the Isokaze and the Umakaze play very similar. Um, one thing to point out with the torpedoes on these ships, the detectability by surface is 0.8 kilometers for the Umakaze. That goes up to 1.2 for the Wakataki torps, and then 1.4 with the Isokaze torps. And that's basically very reflective of their speed. So it's you should pretty much have the same reaction time, but that's just something to consider as well. They will get spotted uh, a little further off, but because they're moving at 68 knots instead of 57 or 48, you know, it's uh, pretty much the same amount of time that the opponent has to react to uh, the torpedoes that are incoming. So, of course, all the same stuff when it comes to the captain skills here, and as far as the speed flag is concerned, you only get up to 35.7 knots with the speed flag, so it's certainly a slower ship than the Wakataki. And again, that kind of harkens back to what I just said about it being a bit of a, a less flexible ship than the Wakataki or the Minikaze. So just something to bear in mind. And of course, uh, your detection range like the Wakataki goes down to about 5.9 once you put the proper camo on and um, getting it to... Concealment Expert, again, would be a huge plus being able to get to that 5.5 kilometer range and have a little bit more space for you to be able to operate with and get closer to the enemy ships and uh, be able to ensure that those torpedoes are going to find their mark. So funny little situation here. I fire off at the Congo and I have started to only recently lead the Congos a little bit more. Um, in the range of like a, like drop one or two torp racks ahead of the torp lead indicator and one on or offset back, and it seems to work pretty well. But this clip is rather old from early March, but uh, I didn't see this Nuremberg at all, like before I launched the torp. So he ran in and took one torp, and uh, luckily the Congo still ate two. But switching over to Solomon Islands here, and. Uh, Get my guns in the action here as an enemy Isokazi has tried to drop some torps here. And you can see on the mini map, I've got a few of my teammates behind me here who are all just kind of not pointing the right way. But uh, there is a Phoenix up ahead, and I don't really want to get involved against him. Um, certainly not a good ship to uh, go toe to toe with an enemy cruiser, unless you're obviously in smoke and you've got torps at the ready. But uh, enemy Isokazi manages to beach himself and launches torps but you know he probably could have launched those a little faster and got his guns around to start attacking me but uh there's an enemy wyoming pushing into b and i'm, I'm detected mind you this guy knows i'm here <laughs> and uh i get the torps off as the phoenix starts to pay a little bit more attention to me and the wix is kind of I'm, I'm not entirely sure if he's going to move over here or not, but he I think it was actually him that managed to get a few hits on me there. Um, as you can see, there are torp bombers around, so uh, the carrier is somewhere still back up there, but uh, we haven't spotted him yet. And somehow, 
that Wyoming was just under the threshold for a devastating strike, but got a few tour pits on him and managed to take him out. The Wix is not interested apparently in running any sort of interference here, so I am undetected. The Phoenix is off to my right. I'm just playing the uh, concealment game right now, and I'm um, focusing on getting this Langley off the map because we're down about 100 points and they have two caps to R1. So after I drop these, I'm going to switch right over to B as you can see, and the Torps stay true, and boom, there we go, devastating strike and uh, pull ourselves within about 30, 35 points of the enemy team. Now, we're down four ships to our, well, three ships to four, and uh, it's not in our favor right now as we're down over 100 points now, but um, it's time to see if I can get in here and try to make something happen against this Wix. And it was this scenario specifically that I remembered vividly that I really started to dislike the guns on the ship and I just I could not hit this guy um, we did just lose another ship so now we're down almost 190 points but I just I couldn't seem to hit him at all and even against cruisers I had some miserable accuracy uh, as this bogatier moves in to be to recap what I had just capped so we finally did get rid of the wicks and I've got my uh my friendly neighborhood, South Carolina, uh, moving down into B here with me eventually. So uh, there's another South Carolina that shows up right there. And the Bogatier was burning, but um, they're still right next to each other now that the Bogatier is off uh, behind the island. Uh, not entirely sure if he's running or what. Uh, the enemy does have a Yubari, and clearly he's up at sea. Um, fast forward a little bit, we're down quite a few points and three caps to none, but we are mitigating the points gain on this cap by being on it. So I decide to move up ahead and the South Carolina manages really, really good timing there on finishing off the Bogatier and I creep out to drop my Torps. So the Yabari is still coming this way and he's uh, setting our South Carolina on fire. And this South Carolina continues to go backwards right into the Torps and voila. So now it's just a matter of trying to pull ourselves back together so we can manage to kill this guy and secure a win. So the Yubari focuses down the South Carolina and fire after fire manages to finally take him out and he's not really moving all that much and remember this is back in March so it's not like this guy just bought it. He has had this ship for a very long time because he had played at least at the later stages of the closed beta. So um, he should know a little better than to be sitting broadside like that unless he's training a brand new captain and you know obviously it doesn't have a last stand but it uh, comes down to last couple shots here and boom there we go get the Kraken and a hell of a win actually. But this one was very recent and um, you know uh, current patch and everything. Um, I gotta say, this was a hell of a lot of fun to play. Um, playing it solo again, uh, because I really like playing the Japanese destroyer solo, it works out really well. But uh, this was a clusterfuck over here pretty early on. Uh, I sent my Torps out, managed to take out one of their destroyers, and there's a Kamikaze that's behind me, there's a Kuma right there, but unfortunately the guy I just took out manages to take out our kamikaze as you can see is burning hulk right there <laughs> and uh decide to move in towards middle as an omaha is beached and he's getting picked on by a matsuki who does a hell of a dodge right there that was i you can tell just from that angle it was really really close but uh the matsuki is instead of using his guns he's waiting for his torps and manages to finish off the omaha so I get a bit aggressive and decide to charge in, and I don't know where the Matsuki is. I figure that I'm not going to have any problems with uh, sending these Torps out because the Congo decided to turn north. So managed to find my mark with the Torps, and down goes the Matsuki. So now that all that remains on their team is a Nicholas, and he's spotted right now, and I can outspot him easily, I and finding myself in the sweet spot, which is no man's land. The area that you are 
basically between the two opposing forces, uh, your team and their team. And there's a New York over here at full health who seems to just be minding his own business and trudging along. Uh, I get a bit too close to the enemy cruisers here, and I really don't want to have anything to do with them, uh, being a Marblehead and also a Svetlana, because that's, uh, that's a lot of guns, and if they can zero in on me... That's no good, and uh, I should go up in flames in just a matter of seconds, but looks like my torps are going to hold true here and get detected, unfortunately, again, so I keep flashing up a little bit, but good enough. So hit five torps on the side of the New York and take him out from full health to nothing. And now I'm hotly anticipating this... <laughs> The Svetlana coming around and just completely shredding me. So, this Svetlana is a ship, like I've said before in the uh, the cruiser reviews for the Svetlana. It's it's just a ship that you can't approach. You can't be within a certain range of it because uh, as a destroyer, you're going to get just wrecked by that thing. Now, he sees uh, the rest of my torps coming, so he decides to maneuver, but I at least get one torp hit, which is good. And then... I do have a teammate um, manage to finish him off, so that gets me back into the slot here to where I can get in the position to go ahead and uh, launch these torps as the Nicholas is pulling away from his battleships and providing me all the opportunity to do so. So I just keep checking to see where that Nicholas is because I don't want him to turn around and suddenly cause issues for me as I line up the Wyoming and not the Nikolai. Uh, the Nikolai was kind of pulling away there so I didn't want to have those torps run out and uh, give away my position to the Wyoming in case I uh, had an opportunity there. So I chose to fire the torps at the Wyoming and um, as he killed, he killed somebody else just a moment ago and I figure he's probably in his uh, artillery zoom which is a good thing for me at least but the torps are looking good and I'm more concerned right now about that marble head and how I'm going to be able to manage a crack in here so I got the devastating strike and high caliber with those torps um, the Nikolai is paying a lot more attention doesn't want to end up like his uh, teammates here of course but I was hoping that flooding would stick but I'm going to fire my guns, try to get the damn Kraken because I, I was really craving it on this match. And uh, I get a fire going, but he ends up repairing it. And so I'm kind of forced into the posi po yeah, position of firing again and keeping myself a little bit exposed here. So managed to get the Kraken though, and that turned out to be one of the more fun games that I've had in the Isokazi. So that about wraps it up for the Japanese destroyers, but damn if these aren't some fun ass ships to play really really good and i gotta say if uh if you haven't started the japanese line by all means go ahead and do it you may not even bother advancing up above tier five i know i only I, I still don't even have the hatsuhara research but i uh, hope you enjoyed the videos while i've been away guys i am coming back today and uh thank you very much for watching and i'll see you back here next time take care